Okay. So, g'day everyone. I'm uh, Brett Salakis from Aussie Ed, and welcome to our next installment of the uh, Meet the Innovator video blog. Uh, this is a series where we aim to uh, interview loads of uh, edu innovators from around the world and discuss their passions. And tonight, I'm very, very excited to have uh, a special guest looking like they're joining from some dark and mysterious part of the world. So I'm very happy to see uh, Mr. Uh, Paul Hudson over here with joining me tonight, and you are the night zookeeper. So, g'day, Paul. How are you going? How's it going, Brett? Yeah. Well, I must say, good evening to everyone, and welcome to the night zoo. You see, this is a magical place where anything is possible. You see, we have animals here that you will not find anywhere else in the world. In fact, I'm, I'm here right now in what's called the Jungle of No Return, which can be a very dangerous place for a night zookeeper, because you never quite know what's lurking behind the next tree or bush. In fact, it's very common to find spying giraffes here. Well, what are spying giraffes, you ask? You see, I might be the only zookeeper in the world that can tell you. Spying giraffes are like any normal giraffe during the day, but at night they become magical. They're able to turn invisible and even can disguise themselves as primary and elementary school teachers. In fact, you could be a spying giraffe and you wouldn't be aware of it. Well, that's now. Yeah, that's a little bit. That's a little bit of role role play that that we do, and we we set up this this environment and a few others to uh, to help us connect with schools, and we do some live interactive storytelling um, where we tell the children all about the magical animals, and then we spark their imaginations and get them thinking about what animals they could invent to live in a zoo, um, in a magical zoo like mine. Um, and they, you know, very often after we've had this chat or, or after they've experienced, um, after they've been on the website, they will be very, very, uh, their imaginations will be sparked and they'll be ready to, ready to go and start creating um, lots of weird and wonderful characters and write amazing stories about them. So you're obviously very, very passionate about engaging creativity, engaging imagination, and having that flow into children's literacy. And it's just, I tell you now, I was, I was captured by what you were doing too. <laughs> Straight into character, it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, I think to be honest, Brett, uh, my, my, my passion comes from um, my experience as a primary school teacher. Um, I really loved, you know. Uh, doing the teacher in role stuff, and I saw the the great response that it had um, from the children and, and, and the work that they produced when they were really excited and and almost entertained. I mean, we all know as teachers we need to we need to be entertaining, uh, but sometimes it's exhausting. So it's good to be able to bring in somebody else now and again um, to do that entertaining or or bring in something that can that can really spark imaginations and. Uh, and we all know how important it is um, for child's development to be able to explore their imaginations and, and write creatively. Um, I, I must probably this is the, I mean, this is a, a great segue into um, into what we're doing next month. So on March the first, we're launching a, um, a World Creative Writing Month, um, where we're inviting teachers to sign their classes up um, and compete for prizes by being the class with the most stories written um, about the Night Zoo. So with, with the Night Zookeeper website, we've just launched um, a product that is able to count individual students, um, the amount of words they're writing um, on the site. We're also tracking the amount of reading they're doing um, and the amount of drawing. Uh, but we're, for this conversation, we're focusing particularly on the writing. Mm -hmm. And we've also developed tools for teachers where they can uh, receive every piece of writing that a child does on the on the website, um, and they can grade that writing, and they can also leave um, personalized comments that get sent to the child. And the next time they log into the game, they receive the comment 
based on the story or the character that they created. So it, it can be a really powerful tool. And we're hoping that throughout March, um, people can really experiment with this and really, you know, get get the maximum amount of value um, and have the impact on the students that we that we really think um, that this product can have. So it, it's just such an amazing idea, and this is why I really wanted to to reach out to you because uh, such an innovation and, and, and such an engaging way of. Uh, capturing that uh, little bit of spark that you, you talk about there. I remember not so long ago I saw uh, another British teacher uh, on Twitter, uh, urban, urban teacher, and I remember him, he, he said uh, students engage with the teacher before they engage with the content. And it looks like you're, you're, you're almost uh, outsourcing that little bit of engagement. Um, yeah. So the teacher is able to outsource that engagement Engage through the Night Zookeeper uh, uh, concept, and then really can spark so much writing and so much learning. And I think it's really good uh, to have that little bit of a focus and that and that that drive to have your writing appeal during March. That, that it's it's just I think it's a real winner of an idea. Now, if a teacher, obviously, I'm sitting over here in Australia, and you're yeah. In a mystical, in a mystical uh, location <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Can't reveal the exact location, bro. We got to keep it I secret. I can't reveal the exact location, but I'm assuming uh, if a few people listen to your accent, they might have a little bit of a hint uh, yeah. of where you might be located in one of those tropical rainforests in the northern hemisphere. <laughs> I have uh, been, I have been confused for an Australian in the past, though. Um, <laughs> Why someone I, who I, wasn't an Australian? I take it. Yeah, exactly. A, a Canadian confused me with an Australian, so you know, you never know. <laughs> well, let's just say I, I'll give you, I'll give everyone who's watching a tip that he's not, he's not from the land down under. Just quietly, <laughs> you can yeah. make your own up, you can make your own mind up there from there. But if if a teacher was really inspired to try and connect with the writing program in March. Is the website the the website the Night Zoo the best way to do that? Yeah, exactly. Um, you can just go to nightzookeeper.com, um, and we have a note there on the homepage for the competition. Um, mm. Or we do have a whole bunch of information for teachers. So um, from nightzookeeper.com, there is a there's a link for teachers in the top right corner, um, and you just hit that button, and, and there's a whole bunch of information about what Night Zookeeper is um, and how you can use it at school and um, there's lots of case studies on there of how other teachers have used it um, and you know my my email address is very easy to remember it's just paul at nightzookeeper.com um, so if anyone wants to just get in touch with me um, if they're interested or have any questions I'm very open um, and hopefully I can uh, I, I class myself as quite a helpful person so um, I will try and I try and do my best to uh, to get back to them as quickly as I can. Uh, you're a good man. You're a good man, and your uh, your Twitter handle is just as difficult to remember as your yeah. email, which is <laughs> at the night. Oh, at night zookeeper. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> nice and simple. Uh, yeah. So you can reach out on to me uh, on there to me. Um, yeah, we're uh, we're keeping an eye on that um, quite a lot at the moment. Um, so yeah. Twitter is a good place to reach me. Twitter is a good place. So if, if a teacher, yes, they want to come through and do March, but you run all year round, obviously it's not just a, 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 a little small window to engage with you. You've got the website, you've got the, the Twitter. Is there another yep. way that, uh, are there any other ways that teachers are able to engage with Night Zookeeper? Yeah, so we're on, um, we're on Skype in the classroom. Um, I probably shouldn't talk about Skype while I'm on a, a Google Hangout, but... Um, <laughs> Good yeah. brother, share the love. Yeah, we're on uh, we're on Skype in the classroom, so you can get in touch with us through there. Um, you know, pretty much every social channel you can think of. We're on, you know, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Pinterest. So, you know, you can you can get a lot of information just by just by googling Night Zookeeper, and um, I'm sure you'll find us very easily. Uh, and I love how you've managed to stay in character this whole time and have your torch up just in case any of those. Yeah. Uh, I need, to, um, yeah. I need to make sure that there's no mysterious animals lurking around in the darkness there. Ah, oh, there you go, there you go. Oh, do, do me a favour and give me a, a description of another 
just jump back in the character for me a second, and uh, okay. you can see it just over my shoulder or something. And you can see, yeah. you see, there's another someone else is creeping up behind me. Who's there? Yeah. You know what? You know what? There is actually another animal that I'm I'm just about to go and visit um, on my nightly rounds, uh, and this animal was actually created by a an eight year old child from Manchester. Um, this ch this animal is called a purple octo cow which is a cross between an octopus and a cow. You see, this, this animal can produce any flavor milkshake that you desire. <laughs> and I'm not talking about your regular flavors. I mean anything, anything at all that you want. This animal is very, very helpful. So, yeah, that is, uh, that, that's, that's the beauty of Night Zookeeper is all these ideas, they, they spring from from children, they write stories about them, and and to be honest, my head is filled with thousands and thousands of these these unique creatures that have that have been spawned from children's, um, you know, the depths of their imaginations. Uh, and it's such a great job, um, a great job to have, and you know, I'm lucky every day that uh, I get to read another story um, about about a character that lives in this world. So, yeah, it's a joy to work on. Oh, that, that, it sounds like you truly do love what you're doing, and, and you know what, from an outsider looking in, it sounds like what you're doing is spreading a lot of love and a lot of learning around the world. So, look, I really want to uh, say thank you, and I appreciate you uh, coming online and, and, and joining me on our Meet the Innovator video blog, and a uh, big thank you from all of the Aussie Ed team, and I really do hope that uh, you're able to hopefully connect with a few other teachers who might be uh, lucky enough and fortunate enough to uh, come into contact you, with you via this or via any other sort of means. But uh, look, good luck with the with the March writing competition and good luck with everything that you are doing. And, and uh, you know, my hat goes off to you because I'm a bit of a fan and uh, I think you're doing a lot of good work. So uh, well done. Thank you very much, Brett. Thanks for your time. All right, thank you very much for joining us. This has been another episode of Meet the Innovators, and uh, stay tuned. I'm sure we'll have someone uh, equally special uh, coming up uh, in a not-too-distant future, but keep in mind, if you do want to um, visit the Night Zookeeper, go to thenightzookeeper.com and uh, enroll in that March writing competition. Sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to see if I can get my class involved in it too. So uh, thanks a lot for coming tonight. Thank you, Paul, and uh, you have a, a really good day. Thank you.